So we're minding our own business one day and someone walks up to us and they said, you know, I think, I think the variance of people's heights at this university is, and they stop and they think and they say, oh, I think it's going to be 40. And that's when we measure heights in centimeters. And we're now well equipped to sort of dispute this claim or confirm it one way or the other. Um, and so we decide to go out and conduct an experiment of our own and sort of see if we can collect evidence that will either prove or disprove this claim. Okay. And so this person is claiming that, in fact, sigma square is equal to 40 in our population of people's heights. And we go out and collect data on people's heights. And we find some critical information. We find that the sample mean of people's heights is 185. And we find that in our sample, the sample variance is equal to 30. Okay. And finally, you know, just to make sure, we've got a sample size of 41 people. And we, we need to set out, we've, we've gone and collected this data to see if we can prove this person wrong or prove them correct. And we need a formal statistical test to say, okay, I've just collected a sample with these properties. It's got 41 people in it, an average height of 185, and a sample variance of 30 centimeters squared. Can I prove this person wrong? Okay. Well, we can use a, a, a key fact we've just learned uh, regarding the sample variance. And that's that, okay, if... Let's suppose for a moment that this person is telling the truth. If in fact, under our null hypothesis, sigma squared is equal to 40. Okay, if that is true, our alternative is that it's not. But if it is true, if our null hypothesis is true, if this person is telling the truth, well, then I know that n minus 1 times my random variable s squared, which is the random variable representing the distribution of sample variances. If I was to divide this by the true variance, which we're assuming is 40, okay, that's going to be distributed as a chi-square distribution with 40 degrees of freedom, n minus 1 degrees of freedom. We can actually replace this n minus 1 up here with another 40, okay. We've got this sort of coincidental situation here where it so happens that uh, our sample size minus one, okay, is equal to our null hypothesis variance. That's sort of very rare, um, but we've got that situation here. And so I'm going to leave this as 40 on 40 just to, just to emphasize the fact that this isn't always going to cancel out. But we've got this m minus one times the distribution of our sample variances divided by our null hypothesis variance should be distributed as a chi-square distribution with 40 degrees of freedom. We could draw a picture of this. A chi-square distribution with 40 degrees of freedom is gonna look something like, something like this. It's gonna sort of have a peak. It's gonna have a long right tail though, okay. We know everything about this chi-square distribution because after all, it's just the sum of 40 the square, sum of the squares of 40 independently distributed normal distributions. So if we want to, and we do, we can find out some, some critical values for this distribution. Okay, so let's just draw in a few more steps. So one, I've set up my null alternative hypotheses. Two, I've realized that oh, I'm testing the variance, so I should probably use a chi-square test. That's so what we're gonna be doing is a chi-square test. Three, I wanna set up my level of significance. And so this is gonna answer the question, just how unlikely do I want my observations to be under the null hypothesis to reject the null hypothesis? And we're gonna use um, alpha equals 0.05, which basically says, okay, if under the assumption that the null hypothesis is true, I want my observation to be less than 5% likely in order to reject the null hypothesis, okay. And so the next thing we gotta do, step four, is sort of formulate a decision rule, okay? So we've got to figure out a region, okay, region to the left and to the right that contain sample me sample variances, okay, sufficiently far away from my null hypothesis population variance 
that we would say, you know, it was less than 5% likely to get a sample variance this far away, this far away from the true sample variance, i.e. the mean of this distribution of sample variances. Okay. And so we know that this sample variance times n minus one divided by the null hypothesis population variance is going to be distributed chi-square with 40 degrees of freedom. This is a standard distribution. So we can actually look up these two values. And because we've got a significance level of 5%, we're looking for the values that contain 2.5% of the probability to their left and 2.5% of the probability to their right. Hmm. But if this contains 2.5% of the probability to the right, it contains 97.5% of the probability to the left. And so we're going to find the critical values from this distribution that contain respectively 2.5 and 97.5% of the probability to their left. And so we're, what we're going to do is we're going to reject the null hypothesis if either we have, we'll call this our statistic chi-square, which we're about to calculate, is less than this critical value. Well, this is going to be called chi-square 0.025, so the probability with 40 degrees of freedom. So either you're in this region here, or you reject if you're in this region here, and we can write or our statistic, which we're about to calculate, is greater than, greater than chi-square with 0 0.975 and 40 degrees of freedom. This is basically saying, okay, I reject the null hypothesis if my chi-square statistic from my data is less than this critical value from this distribution with 2.5% of the probability to the left, or if my statistic, my chi-square statistic from my data is greater than this critical value from my standard distribution with 2.5% of the probability to the right, or 97.5% of the probability to the left. And so we can go to a table and we can look both of these values up. And if we do, we're going to get values of 59.34 and 24.43. And so if my chi-square statistic is to the left of this value or to the right of this value, I'm going to reject this stranger's null hypothesis that in fact the variance of people's heights in the population is 40. Okay. So what we need to do next is we need to calculate the value of this statistic. And in general, the formula for this is going to be n minus 1 times our sample variance divided by our null hypothesis variance. Okay, We've got a very funny situation in this case where n minus 1 happens to be equal to sigma squared. So this is just going to be equal to our sample variance, which is 30. We've got our chi-square statistic from our data. This is from a distribution, from a chi-square distribution with 40 degrees of freedom. And the only thing left to do in this hypothesis test is to conclude. And well, we've got a situation here where, okay, 30, well, 30 is not less than 24.43. It's greater than 24.43. Okay. And in addition, 30 is not greater than 59.34. It's less than 59.34. And so I'm neither in this left-hand rejection region or this right-hand rejection region. And so we can conclude from this that I would fail. I would fail to reject the null hypothesis, H0. And so in words, we would say, in fact, there is not sufficient evidence. So we're, we're lacking the evidence um, to reject this person's claim, okay? We don't think it's necessarily true. We're not saying the precise value of 40 is true. We're just saying we don't have enough evidence to reject their claim, to reject their claim that in fact, if I was to look at the true population stand deviation of people's heights, that it would be 40. Okay. And so just to rewind some key steps here, we're setting up a null and alternative hypothesis. And these are going to be, as usual, statements about population parameters. But in particular, in this case, because our population parameter of interest is the variance, these are going to be statements about variance, which are usually going to be of the form sigma square equals something for the null hypothesis. And sigma square is you know greater than, equal to, or less than something for the alternative hypothesis. 
The type of test we're doing is a chi-square test because, because the sampling distribution of the sample variance, if we scale it like this, follows a chi-square distribution, so we can use it to test. Our level of significance has the same interpretation it always has. How unlikely do I want my observation to be under the null hypothesis to reject the null hypothesis? And here's sort of the tricky bit, because a chi-square distribution, unlike a normal distribution, is not symmetric. And so it's not sufficient to look up this value and take the negative of that value, like we could in the normal distribution. We have to look at both of these values distinctly in our table. And in this case, it wasn't too hard. Since we know that there's n equals 41, we know there's going to be n minus 1, or 40 degrees of freedom in our testing chi-square distribution. And so we can look these values up in a standard chi-square table. And our second to last step, Calculating this statistic is very simple. We simply have to scale our sample variance, which we know, by n minus 1 divided by our population variance. And a key thing, just like in our t-test, where we replace the population mean by our null hypothesis population mean, so to here, we replace our population variance by our null hypothesis population variance of 40. And this allows us to compute a chi-square statistic, which we can compare to our chi-square critical values to figure out whether our observation was less than 5% likely under our null hypothesis. And in this case, because we weren't in those rejection regions, we can say, well, what I saw wasn't less than 5% likely under the null hypothesis that sigma square equals 40. Therefore, I failed to reject the null hypothesis. Therefore, there's not sufficient evidence to reject the claim that sigma square is in fact equal to 40.